Joining me now, Congressman Byron Donalds from Florida and Steve Moore from the great state of Committee to Unleash Prosperity. How about that? You're both from states. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for coming on. So um, let's see. We're going to begin. We have the poll. We're going to show the poll uh, on why uh, people. Uh, yeah, here it is. The Gallup poll, 35 percent believe they're better off today than they were a year ago. 50 percent think they're worse off. And the um, TIPS poll shows 33 percent believe they're better off and 61 percent believe they're worse off. So, Byron, uh, Donalds, I'll begin with you, sir. Um, Biden's got two strikes. Nobody likes his State of the Union message, and nobody likes his economy. And um, I don't know that that's going to make him change from his socialist ways and his Bernie Sanders ways. But what does it tell you about the current situation? And what does it tell you about the opportunities that your new Republican majority may have? Well, first of all, I will say, Larry, your, your analysis of what with the Fed earlier was spot on. I agree with a lot of what you were saying. Oh, thank specifically you. Specifically to Joe Biden. But I agree with you. You were right. Now, to Joe Biden, um, his policies are awful. We know that. The American people know they're awful. We know that as well. It does present an opportunity for House Republicans to present agenda items on a myriad of issues, financial regulation reform, energy, energy markets, opening up our domestic energy production, trying to do some stuff in permitting that uh, I think Joe Manchin tried to do either in the Inflation Reduction Act or something. He gave them a vote, thought he was going to get it and never got anything. We might have an ability to do stuff like that. If you start to unleash the energy system in the United States, that, I believe, is some of the secret sauce to help curtail the inflation and bring it under control and take that kind of away from the Fed. Last piece, we're going to have a budget uh, situation coming up in a couple of months here on Capitol Hill, and I know everybody's focused on debt ceiling, but behind that is going to be federal spending through the presidential cycle. We have an opportunity to show the American people that we can take care of the vital things that government should be doing while also pulling back a lot of money the government has spent recklessly to also be able to help curtail the inflation that has harmed so many people in our country. Byron, uh, you know, just on this uh, energy point, uh, at the State of the Union, Biden gave uh, oil and gas and fossil fuels a 10-year death sentence, a 10-year death sentence, which I think was, I mean, in a speech that had so many stupid ideas and so many really bad ideas, but the stupid ones, too, this is among the dumbest. 10 years, and we're going to end fossil fuels. What do you think would happen to this country? You know, refined petroleum products affect virtually every nook and cranny of the American economy. You took that out of play for some crazy reason? Uh, what are you going to have, windmills running airplanes? I mean, come on. It's just impossible. Well, look, I, this, is, this is why House Republicans were laughing when he made that statement, because we understand the truth. You cannot have the American economy run without oil. It is impossible. It's never going to happen. And to put these arbitrary timelines of 10 years, that's why so many uh, oil companies are pulling back their investments in the United States, because they don't know what crazy idea is coming next from this White House. But let me add to your point. Petroleum products, for everybody listening at home, ladies, you love getting your hair done, petroleum products are a part of that. Gentlemen, you want to look good in your nice suits, petroleum products are a part of that. Mm -hmm. And anybody like myself who wears contact lenses every day, mm -hmm. petroleum products are a part of that. They are a part of everything that we do. So if you get rid of oil production, you're taking us back to the Stone Age in terms of how we live on the planet Earth. Makes no sense at all, but what do you expect from the state of confusion speech we all had to witness the other night? State of confusion, I like that. Steve Moore, you're the only person I know uh, who's better off than he was a year or two ago. You're the <laughs> only one. But having, having said that, I couldn't resist. Uh, having said that, uh, it is very dishonest uh, to rail on about how Republicans are going to cut Social Security and they're going to cut into Medicare. And I think he's doing this, Biden's doing this as a distraction because he doesn't want to talk about budget, uh, domestic budget cuts of any kind, discretionary or not. But you're writing in the um, Committee to Unleash Prosperity hotline today that really, you know, in, in 10 years, there's going to be a problem. Everybody knows there's going to be a problem. And it's a little bit disingenuous, this whole 
debate. Mm -hmm. And how you do it, I mean, you probably need a bipartisan committee to sit down and do mm -hmm. it. That's what Ronald Reagan did over 40 years ago with the Greenspan Commission. And, and it kept Social Security intact for a good long while. But, I mean, to some extent, Steve, people are being misled. Um, mm -hmm. There is a problem looming out there. And unless we grow the economy at 35 to 4% for the next 10 years, that problem is going to reemerge. So I ask you, what are you thinking about Social Security and Medicare? Well, let me just re return to one point you made during your monologue, which I think is really so important uh, that you're right, the Fed is missing and so many Wall Street economists are missing. When the long term, the, the interest rate on the long term bonds falls, Correct me if I'm wrong, Larry. Doesn't that mean inflationary expectations are falling? Yes. And yes. so that's yes. a good thing. <laughs> yes. I don't understand why people think that's a bad thing. Yes. You got to bring the expect. That's what happened under Reagan, by the way. Yes. The, the long-term bond came down because people finally realized that there was a credible plan to bring inflation under control. And you have and this so inverted yield curve, deeply inverted yield curve, also. With short rates are much higher than long rates, it right. usually means inflation fears are falling. I mean, right. the Fed is doing That's its right. job. What we don't want is for them to overdo it. And then uh, what we would like is for Byron Donalds and his colleagues to give us some yes. supply side growth. Right. So this is this is one of the most important points. Over the next 10 years, remember we mentioned this last week on your show, but it bears repeating. The average growth rate that's being expected by the blue chip economists, by the Congressional Budget Office, even by Biden's own economists, is 1.6 percent. Mm. That's pathetic, Larry. Mm. That's, we should be growing at 3 to 4 percent mm. coming out of COVID, maybe even 4 to 5 percent, given what we've been through. Mm -hmm. If you look at the periods when the economy really boomed, the Reagan years and the Clinton years, we had 4 percent growth. And guess what? The deficit fell. So I hope, Byron, uh, you're one of my famous economists, favorite congressman, in addition to all the things that you were talking about, the growth agenda is so critical. Finally, on the on the Medicare and Social Security thing, I look, I'm not a politician. I don't have to get people's votes. So I'm just going to tell people the truth. These both of these programs are going to go bankrupt. They're insolvent in the next five to 10 years. I, I hate to rain on people's parades. So for Joe Biden to say, OK, we all agree we're not going to do anything to fix these programs. Larry, I think that's the height of fiscal responsibility. He's actually damaging. He's actually yeah. damaging them with his anti-growth policies, his exactly. anti-free market capitalist policies. Look, you could, uh, Byron, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Steve's not the politician. I'm not the politician, <laughs> or at least I'm not the politician right now. But you could, why not gradually raise the retirement age? It's sitting out there. It's been out there for a long time. It makes a lot of sense. Greenspan did this decades ago. Just, just there's one thing that could be done besides growing the economy, Steve, at three and a half or four percent. Just, just extend the retirement age. Everybody lives longer. I'm living proof of that, by the way. So <laughs> it, it's not that hard to do. Go ahead, Steve. Take a whack at it. Is that for me or Byron? Yes. No, I'm not going to make Byron deal with that because oh, uh, yeah, look. he is a, he is in the political game directly. You and I are just onlookers knocking at the well, door. Well, with, with Social Security, we just have to move the system to a system of personal retirement accounts where people put the money into IRA, you know, like a, a 401k plan. They'll get twice the return that they get. And on Medicare, it's one thing to say you're not going to cut benefits. I don't think that the Republicans talk about cutting benefits. But, you know, what about finding the ways you can reduce the cost of the health care system mm. through things like, you know, Steve Forbes, I know what he'd say. Why, why not medical savings accounts and, and things of that nature? I mean, look, if you don't do anything about Social Security and Medicare in the in the next 10 years, the whole budget's going to be Social Security, Medicare and interest on the debt. We're not going to have money for the military, for roads, for hospitals, for anything else. And by the way, uh, Art Laffer has said and Byron Donalds likes Art Laffer. Art Laffer has said that you have more transparency in the whole yes, medical system. Love that. You save a lot of money. Byron, I'm going to give you the last word. Are you all thinking it's it's uh, this debt deal with whatever savings you can get into it? Is it going to be like a continuing resolution, and then you got to come back and do an FY24 uh, full-fledged budget with 12 appropriation bills? Byron, I just have a minute left. Is that how it's going to work? 
Uh, our plan is to actually have the 12 appropriation bills and move with spending for that next calendar year. Specific to the debt ceiling, we're actually talking about that right now amongst ourselves and trying to figure out, you know, look, really look at what that game plan looks like it, and empower Speaker McCarthy to have as many possibilities to negotiate this with the White House. Um, real quick, to pro-growth policies, I'm all for that. Growing at 1%, 1.5% is anemic. Makes no sense at all in a country like ours. We should be hustling and busting. 3 to 4 percent, probably even 5, but mm -hmm. a lot of policies got to change go, for 5. Byron, I know one other quick, quick thing. Gotta stop. Go back to the 2019 pre-COVID baseline, not the 2023 Biden blowout baseline. All right. We'll do, do the details later. Uh, <laughs> Byron, Byron is a very good economist, and you're right. Growth is essential, whatever it is, Social Security, Medicare, the whole economy. If we have 1% growth or 1.5% growth, we will not satisfy the needs of prosperity for this country. We will not there make people happy. We will not have the job opportunities. It's all there. Anyway, uh, Congressman Byron Donalds, we appreciate you very much. We appreciate you putting up with Steve Moore uh, and <laughs> myself.